Blessings Yasharel. I hope everyone is doing well. Yasharel, I'm working on a video to premiere next weekend to give the full understanding about the tests in your nose and after that another video to prove by scriptures where in the book of Revelation we are. For we have long passed the seals. Remember in my teaching titled Connect the Dots, I revealed to you that 666 is mRNA and that the joke changes your DNA and when it does you will no longer be in the image of the Mosai. Hear for yourselves Yasharel from the horse's mouth that mRNA does affect and change your DNA. Yasharel, protect your temple at all costs and rewatch my teaching for details. Yas protection. Hallelujah. Praise ya. Kim, what's on your radar? Well, AP and Reuters did an interesting fact check that trended on social media yesterday about whether or not COVID vaccines alter DNA. Now, before we get to the fact check, I wanna give you a little background information. Since the announcement of mRNA technology being the method used to create COVID vaccines, there have been people in the scientific community who were skeptical that it was the best method of all the vaccine methods we have available. The concern being that it hadn't been tested enough, it hadn't been used before, and there were still some lingering questions. Now, one of those questions being whether or not the mRNA molecule can penetrate the nucleus and alter or combine with our DNA. Now, some experts said they believed it could. After all, prior to the pandemic, mRNA technology was being studied as a promising new way to alter genes. The idea being mRNAs could alter bad genes that make a person susceptible to various illnesses and diseases. And that sounds pretty amazing. If we could avoid the diseases that we're genetically prone to, I think most of us would definitely want to do that. But the problem is it was all still very experimental and mRNAs hadn't quite gotten to that point yet. So when the vaccines were being rolled out, some scientists who knew what mRNAs were designed to do warned that they could possibly change our DNA. Now, obviously, this set off a frenzy amongst people who were already vaccine hesitant, and anyone who cited this as a concern was then labeled a conspiracy theorist. So that is where this, came, this claim came from, and apparently a study by some Swedish scientists, which we'll get into, was trending on social media to the point AP and Reuters decided to issue some fact checks. So here's AP's fact check. Social media users are citing months old study from Sweden to push the unproven theory that mRNA COVID-19 vaccines permanently alter recipients DNA. Experts and the study authors say the research is being misinterpreted. Here are the facts. I want to uh, just just so you know hone in on that word permanently so they are kind of giving some quanti they're qualifying it a bit. But let's see what the AP's fact check article says. So in the article it says claim a Swedish study shows that Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine changes recipients' DNA, AP's assessment, false. The study tested whether the vaccine's mRNA could be converted to DNA and found that this was the case in certain lab-altered liver cell lines under experimental conditions. It did not assess whether the vaccine alters the human genome or what the effects of that would be, according to experts and the study authors. Experts say additional research is needed because the findings in the lab setting cannot be used to make inferences about what might happen in a human body. So I found this statement interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, I noticed AP didn't call this a conspiracy theory, but instead an unproven theory. So this gives me a little hope that maybe the trend of labeling anyone who questions something is a conspiracy theorist, maybe that's waning. Secondly, rather than just dismiss the claim outright, they did state that experts say more research is needed. So it's inconclusive. Now let's look at the Reuters fact check. A Swedish study conducted by Lund University does not show that mRNA COVID-19 vaccines permanently alter human DNA. The author said their study could not be used to draw conclusions with human DNA as, the, as they used cell lines in lab petri dish for their work. Now, Reuters actually links us to a Q&A with the study's authors on the Lund University website. And the authors say the reason why they even took up this study was because of a previous study published by MIT, which indicated that SARS-CoV-2 virus mRNA can be converted to DNA and integrated into the human genome. Now that study set off a frenzy and received an enormous amount of backlash for quote unquote, feeding the vaccine skeptics. But the Swedes wanted to further study this. And what they did was they took human liver cells 
to see if the mRNA would penetrate the nucleus and integrate with the DNA, and they found that it did. They said, quote, we show that the vaccine enters liver cells as early as six hours after the vaccine has been administered. We saw that there was DNA converted from the vaccine's mRNA in the host cells we studied. These findings were observed in Petri dishes under experimental conditions, but we do not yet know if the converted DNA is integrated into the cell's DNA in the genome, and if so, if it has any consequences. So the reason they chose liver cells was because during testing, a Pfizer study injected the vaccine into mice and found that 18% of the vaccine accumulated in the liver after 30 minutes. So these researchers decided to try it on human liver cells. And they went on to say, quote, it's important to bear in mind that the liver cells in the study are more genetically unstable than our own liver cells. So they give you that uh, you know, qualification of this whole entire study. So we don't really know what it would do in a living organism, a human being, and to our liver cells, but they saw what they saw in the Petri dish. And they said, quote, we understand that the study would attract attention, but we think it's self-evident that this type of research should be pursued. We have a new vaccine and it needs to be tested in cell and animal models and also in humans in various ways. The results might be surprising, but it's also a bit surprising that such studies do not seem to have been carried out before. So that was the whole fact check that was going on on social media with AP and Reuters. Um, I thought it was really interesting, the framing of it, how they didn't conclusively say it does not. Now, when people, when experts first came out and said, you know, there's a possibility that it does this, and then people are saying, oh, I don't wanna take something that's gonna change my DNA. There was a, a, an enormous amount of fact checking that came out from various media organizations, health organizations that said, no, it does not do this. And they stated that conclusively. And then MIT came out with a study in December of 2020 and said, eh, actually, you know, kind of looks like it might. And now this Swedish study from Lund University says, yeah, maybe, and more needs to be done to be studied on this. And now you've got AP and Reuters saying, Okay, inconclusive. I mean, that's what their fact check basically came back at. Rather than say, it doesn't, you conspiracy theorist, you. They actually said, inconclusive, more study right. is needed. And that's what these scientists are saying. So uh, I just wanted to point that out. It, this is just another example of people being labeled conspiracy theorists, told no, you're wrong, without evidence. I mean, we just don't have the evidence yet. And it's okay to say, we don't know. But that seems right. to have been... It's it sounds like the label used in the fact check is actually very accurate. It is inconclusive. That's right, there are there's some theory. reason right. to think that description might be accurate, the changing of the DNA, but we that was only under certain conditions. We don't know that, that how well that would be replicated in in actual, you know, human beings. And, and it might right. be the case that infrequently it could happen that way or or, or not at all or frequently we just don't know it, it seems obvious we should do more testing because you know given that covid is not going away anytime soon you know there's going to be there are going to be new more people are going to be taking vaccines for this and, and other diseases are going to be interested in using this technology we want to fully understand it uh you know given that it is going to be a, a, a prevalent part of our response to a disease that will be around um, so, so yeah, there definitely has to, has to continue to be reason. You can't just say, no, 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 we know we have it figured out, nothing to see here and like move on with it when now they're clearly saying, yeah, we don't, we don't completely know. So we need to yeah. do more research. So Katie, I want to ask you because, so when the MIT study came out first before the Swedish one, they were, those scientists were hounded, right? They were told, how dare you publish this? This is just going to feed the conspiracy theorists and the other sign, the criticism that they say they received wasn't really on the science itself. It was just on the effects of what the science would do to people and their minds. And we see this a lot in a variety of scenarios, not just with vaccines and COVID, but we see this, you know, this sort of dynamic of, well, you know, religion will do this a lot, right? They say, well, we don't want to even talk about this other thing, like an alien, <laughs> you know, like what if there are aliens on, I know Robbie loves this. What if there's aliens on foreign planets? You know, we can't talk about that because then there might be no existence of God, right? It kind of, even if we discover that there might be one day. What do you make of this, like this kind of shielding? Should we shield for the greater good? Or do you think we should just be forthcoming all the time? Ooh, uh, wow, that's a hardball. So early in the morning for that one. Um, <laughs> well, it does remind me a bit of the conversation that we are having about the way that people are just labeled conspiracy theorists. Um, without necessarily uh, evidence of that. So I think that that is a dangerous tendency. Um, in terms of, uh, I, I think that, you know, it's a, I understand why people are afraid of 
misinformation, Robbie, I can't remember if it's misinformation or disinformation when it comes to right. public health, but I do think that that causes a credibility problem. Disinformation right. is if you're purposefully doing it to try to dissuade and misinformation is just if you mistakenly, I think, have the wrong right. information. Is that is that how the two? Ca- That's how it can be defined. Well, I've now, yeah. I'm now I'm now seeing some people essentially define disinformation. It, the information might not actually be false, but it's coming from a source that has some agenda or something that's hostile oh, to the person wielding the term. Right. So, th- so that's how they allow the well mm-hmm. under the theory that Russia had something to do with the Hunter Biden laptop, even though we actually don't know that that's the case. And there's right. like the most credible theory is that that's not the case. But they would if it had been planted by or or, the, or whatever the hacking of the emails. It can be disinformation, even if the information is true, because the source is like a, that, that's according to the disinformation reporting people. Obviously, I think that of framing course. is pretty suspect and is you know, there is right. being used to get around the fact that we're just talking about um, true information. But that is a good point, Kim, that, that um, the, the epidemiologists, the public health bureaucracy's obsession with messaging and like, oh, oh, we can't trust people with the literal truth because what if that causes them to do X, Y, or Z? And then they're, they're committing two mistakes, one being that, yes, philosophically, I would say that like people just deserve the truth anyway. But then B... Okay, even if you agree that like public health messaging should be should be done to promote some goal and if that means like keeping the truth from people, we should do that. But the public health people have expertise in public health, not in public opinion. Like they right. don't know. Like and, and they're the first people to say that only, you know, experts in your field are the only one can have an opinion on everything. I'm like, "Okay, but you're not a polling expert. Like you don't know what kind of messaging tracks with people. Like they'll, they'll say, "Yeah, well, we don't want to encourage or like we didn't want to push sometimes they didn't want to get boosters out because what if that makes people less likely to get the initial vaccine well you have no idea that that messaging yeah. would cause that you're not an expert in that so you know stick stick to the science and those are the people who say who tell everyone else they have to stick to the science yeah i i just really think the greater good doing something for the greater good is always telling them the truth no matter how mm-hmm. the truth changes what you think the greater good is it's it just it is what it is yeah. you know if alien there's aliens on foreign planets Robbie, I'm sure of it, and when you find out, I know. it's going to make you question. We haven't uh, we haven't done aliens. I always get a lot of <laughs> hostile feedback when we discuss aliens because I'm more of a more of a skeptic. skeptic. You're such a skeptic. You think we're yeah. alone in the universe? I don't know. I'm so anyway. I'm alone. I don't know about you, but <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Well, let's leave it there. Uh, That's it for us for today. And tomorrow on Rising, we'll be passing the baton over to Ryan Grimm and Emily Jashinsky, of course. Uh, But we are so glad having Katie Halper with us today. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And uh, we look forward to having you uh, do it from in studio, side by side, uh, someday soon. (laughs) All right, everybody, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And be sure to check out our podcast. You can download it so you can listen to us on the go. Uh, 